Hello and welcome to today's webinar session, What's New in the FDOT Civil 3D 2024 State Kit? For those of you joining us, welcome. Today we will be covering what's new in the FDOT Civil 3D 2024 State Kit along with new features in Civil 3D as well as some tips and tricks along the way. This session is divided into two segments presented by me, Mike Rocca, and Randy Roberts, both of us from the Florida Department of Transportation. For the first segment, I will show a quick slide discussing what the feature is and what it is used for, then show a demonstration of the feature or application. So let's get started. Okay, so let's quickly uh, just go over the five uh, subjects that we're going to talk about. Uh, one is the Reference Manager, which is an Autodesk product that we have taken and included in on the FDOT ribbon inside Civil 3D. We've created an in-house application known as the GCS Reporter or the Geographic Coordinate System Reporter which will scan an entire project and give uh, feedback as to what, if any, coordinate system has been assigned to a drawing. Uh, we've added the ability to assign a coordinate system um, when creating a drawing using the Create File Utility. We've made some changes on the Create Project application as to how that dialog box gets filled out using a projectsproperty.xml. And then last, we'll talk about the subassembly packer, which uh, scans a drawing corridor and collects all the custom F. subassembly files that was used to build that corridor and how to pack it up and put it with the project and, um, for future use. The Autodesk Reference Manager is located on the Quality Assurance panel on the F. ribbon inside the F. Civil 3D State Kit now. The Autodesk Reference Manager provides tools to list reference file in selected drawings and modify the saved reference paths without having to open each individual file in AutoCAD, saving you a lot of time. Drawings with unresolved references can easily be identified and fixed, and then a report can be re exported as well. This helps to identify drawings that reside outside of the FDOT project structure or to locate files that may be missing. The Reference Manager also looks for other external files, including text, fonts, images, and plot configurations. Also, instead of just having to do each individual drawing at a time, you can take the entire FDOT project and drag it into the Reference Manager. It'll scan the entire project without having to select each individual DWG file. So here in the State Kit, on the Quality Assurance panel, we're going to select the Reference Manager. On the left hand side, we're going to select Add Drawings. We're going to go to our project. And we're going to select a drawing that has a missing reference. We can select either one drawing at a time or we can hold down the Shift key and select multiple files. I'm going to select this drawing, click Open. I'm going to choose Add All XREFs Automatically Regarded of Nesting Level. It's going to process it. And then on the left hand side, we can see the status, whether they've been resolved or they're missing or not resolved. We have the found path and the host path of where the drawing's at. On the left-hand side here, we can expand the drawing name and take a look at each category. And on the bottom here, we have a plus symbol next to XREF, meaning it found an XREF. So it's looking for this topo drawing RD01. We can see that the status of it is not found. Here's where the path where it should be found in the survey folder. So let's go ahead and correct this. So I'm going to launch my Windows Explorer. I'm going to take this file, Topo RD01. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to select my project. And I'm going to find that survey folder. That's what it's looking for it at. I'm going to paste it in there. And minimize Windows Explorer. And now we're going to go to the found path. That's where it's at now. Select it. Yes, it is in that survey folder now. Let's go and just pick it just to make sure it is picking the right project in the survey. I'm going to click OK. Click OK again. And you can see over here to the left, the status of it has been resolved now. And we can go ahead and say Apply Changes. Instead of having to open the drawing, do the, uh, the Save Path and Found Path. We can do it all right in here. And click OK. It saves a lot more time. Next, let's look and see how we can add an entire project to this Reference Manager. So I'm going to go ahead and say Exit. 
I'm going to launch the Reference Manager again. And I'm going to find my project here. And I'm going to left click and just drag it into the Reference Manager dialog box. Again, I'm going to choose Add All XREFs Automatically. And it's processing 28 drawings. So it, uh, it's actually pretty quick. Uh, we'll just give it a few seconds here to run through. All right, so here we can see that it loaded all the drawings, DWG files that it found on that project. Again, you can just uh, click this little plus symbol to expand it to view each category. Uh, again, there's some with XREFs. It's looking for that topo. It's resolved, that one. Um, up here on the top, we can choose Export Report. And it's going to give you the option to where we want to save that report. It's a CSV file, so basically it's an Excel file that we can open up and look at. So let's go ahead and we're going to browse to that report. Just look at it real quick. So here's on the bottom, report one. Double click. And you can see it's basically the same data that you see in the reference manager. You have your host drawing, the type of uh, data it's looking for. The status, if it's found or not found, or whether it's resolved. Um, you have your reference names that it's looking for, the file names, the saved path. And over here on the far right, you can actually see the version of some of these objects uh, dating back to 2013, 2008. So we have the GCS reporter, or the Geographic Coordinate System reporter. It's located on the Quality Assurance panel and the, on the FDOT ribbon and the FDOT Civil 3D State Kit. This is a reporting application that reports the status of what coordinate system is set in a DWG file for an entire project. This is useful to scan files so that a user can make sure that they are using the correct coordinate system when referencing data such as images and DWG files. It also has the ability to export the report to an Excel file. And this is also part of the delivery project checklist. So inside the FDOT state kit on the FDOT ribbon, we're going to choose the GS reporter icon. Here you see that a palette comes up. We can move it around. Up on the top, we have the option to browse to our project. So we're going to go to Project Folder, select our project, click OK. Up on the top, just verify you have the right project selected. On the bottom left here, we're going to choose Run. And give it a second. It quickly sends an entire project and gives you a report of all the drawings that are in that project. Up on the top, you can move the columns around so you can see the data much clearer. Uh, we have the file path, the file name, and the coordinate system that's being used. You can click in these columns and you can't change them from here. You can only get a report. So you'll have to go through each drawing manually if you need to change the coordinate system for these files. So here we're just uh, saving the report real quick. Uh, we can open it up in a Microsoft Excel file. And up on the top, we can move the columns around and just basically just gives us the same information that we're reviewing. Um, on the tool palette itself inside of Civil 3D. So here we have the create file application. We've added the option of assigning a coordinate system to files as you create new drawings. As you may know, the create file application creates new drawing files using the FDOT standards and the FDOT master template file. And you can assign a coordinate system or Florida coordinate system based on the county location and or the coordinate system itself. And as a tip, if you get to assign a coordinate system during the create file process, you can type in set FL at the command prompt. and It will give you a shortcut of Florida coordinate systems. So on the left here, we can select create file. Um, browse to your drawing or your project. So 
select the folder. Again, just pick your discipline, your file group. Uh, here we're going to pick the line file. And on the bottom left here, we can pick the county that it's in. If you pick the county, it'll automatically assign the coordinate system to it. We have all the counties in Florida here. And on the right, you can also just select the coordinate system itself. So we'll say create open file. Click close to close out of the create file dialog box. And now if we go to the settings tab on the tool page, on the tool space prospector, right click and say edit drawing settings. On the unit and zone tab, we can see here that it did assign the correct coordinate system during the create file process. So we're going to click cancel. And again, if you did not set a coordinate system, you can type in set FL. And it'll give you a quick list of different coordinate systems available in Florida to assign to a drawing. Just get a little dialog box here warning you that you're about to change the coordinate system. And again, you can go to settings, edit drawing settings, and just verify that that is the coordinate system that you assigned to that file. We have the create project application. Uh, as you may know, this application creates an F dot project. This application can set up the appropriate directory structure and other required components specific to the project information that's been provided. But now to create an FDOT project, you must be connected to the FDOT network in order to generate a projectproperties.xml file. If you don't have a projectproperties.xml file for the create project dialog box, you can request one from the FDOT project manager or the district CAD manager. This projectproperties.xml file can then be imported into the create project application to create a project from here on out. You can also import a mock.xml file to create a project without specific project properties. One final option that you have is to take the f.project template, copy it from the install directory, paste it to where your projects are at, and then rename that as well. So here we're going to go to the f.folder. The create project is an external application. You must have Civil 3D closed down when running this. We're going to double click on the create project icon and let it load. Up here on the top, you can pick where the project goes. Um, you can type in the project number. Here we're connected to F dot network, so I can type in the item, segment, phase, and sequence number and click load. And you can see here that it will load the project data successfully with the description, and the location information. If I need to take that information and export it out, I can go to the file pull down menu and say export. Here I'm just going to pick a location I want that XML file to be exported to and click OK. It's been successfully exported and we're just going to take a look at it real quick. It's just an XML file. We're going to right click on it, open it with Notepad, and you can see that it does have all the project information in it. So let's go ahead and close that out. Close out Create Project. And let's go ahead and uh, select the Create Project application again. Now if we want to import that XML file, we can go to File, Import. And we're going to go up to our uh, desktop here where we saved the last one. This is if you're a consultant and you need to import that XML file that's been provided to you. Click open, and then you can see that it fills out all the information in the Create Projects dialog box. You can click close. You can come down here and click clear, and it'll clear everything out. We can also um, import a dummy project if we just want to create just a blank project. Uh, we're going to go here to our C drive. We're going to go to our F.2024 Civil 3D folder, go to our Apps folder, and click go to create project and then we have a project properties 99999.xml click open and it just briefly fills that information it does have any location information in it or anything and then we can create a project from here we can clear this out and there's one final option that we can go through to create a project if we don't need an xml file or anything is we can go to the c drive go to our install directory 
and we can select this f.project templates which has, which has the f.project structure in it. We can copy it and then pick a location. Here I'm going to put in my projects folder, right click and paste it, and then I can just come up here and rename it. But when you do it this way, it doesn't alter any of the DST files for Sheet Set Manager. They're all blank, so they're not going to have any of the project information in it as it would if you had a proper XML file from um, DOT. So here we have the um, subassembly packer located on the tools panel. The uh, f.subassembly packer archives custom f.subassemblies that have been used to model a corridor. The f.assembly packer utility archives all the associated .dll files required for the function of building a corridor 3D model. It also creates a subassembly backup.zip file and places it in the roadway folder. If the project gets moved from one computer to another that doesn't have these DLLs, then you would place the DLLs in the support path that contains your sub-assemblies. So here we're going to go to the f.ribbon. We're going to go to the Tools panel and choose Sub-Assembly Packer. A tool palette comes up. Up on top, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select the project. So we're going to go to our Projects folder. And we're going to choose the roadway folder in that project because the roadway folder uh, contains all of our quarter models. Then we're going to click Find. And what it's going to do is it's going to uh, scan our drawings that contain quarter models. And it's going to find all these sub-assemblies that were required to create those 3D quarter models. And you can see that it found about 26 of them. You can go down the list and you can see that there's uh, several in there with F dot um, and the first part of the name. So those are the ones that we want to uh, package up. And it's going to automatically back it up to the roadway folder for that project by default. So here we're going to just go ahead and say package. Uh, the package has been successfully created, which basically means it created a zip file. So let's go ahead and go to our roadway folder. There is our subassembly backup.zip file. We're going to right click on it. We're going to choose extract all. Click extract. And there are our four F dot custom sub assemblies that were used to create our model. Now, if we want Civil Theater to find these on a computer that may not have these DLL files, we can take these and copy them. And we're going to go to our program data folder. We're going to go to our Autodesk folder. We're going to go to the Civil 3D, uh, whatever year that we're using. In this case, is 2024. Then we're going to go to ENU. And then we're going to go to the F dot sub assemblies. If you have that folder, if not, you can place it in one folder up. Go ahead and paste them in there. Um, in this case, we already have them. So we'll probably get a dialog box asking if we want to replace the files in this destination. I'm just going to click on the X. And that's how you use the subassembly packer. Hello, I'm Randy Roberts. And my segment of the webinar will contain five items. The first one is f.multiline which allows users to draw 2D FDM exhibit road sections complete with pay item numbers that can then be targeted for corridor modeling. XREF Compare allows users to compare changes to a file that has been X referenced into a file. Line Calculator, a quick utility that measures 2D line work such as pavement striping. Traffic Plan Workflow, an overview of using Civil 3D for traffic plans production. And Project Explorer, which is a one-stop shop for all design parameters to be reviewed and or edited within a design file. So we are going to cover f.multiline. And before I start with that, I'm going to close my tool palettes. I'm going to close tool space so I can have more room on the screen and go into the F dot ribbon and before I use F dot multi line let's create an alignment real quick so creating a alignment in civil 3d is pretty simple um, I'm just going to draw a polyline to start just something simple this one's about 3100 feet and I can create an alignment from objects create the alignment hit enter the arrow for the direction. If it's not what you want, you can reverse it. Hit enter. And the dialog comes up. You can give it a name. 
I'm going to call it State Route 61. And the neat thing about creating alignments in Civil 3D is you can uh, label it automatically as you create it. So we have already got standards set up for you, and you can make changes on labeling if you want, or you can make changes after you label it. It's very simple. So just hit uh, OK. And here we have our alignment already stationed. So a few clicks just to create an alignment. It's a lot faster. So on the F dot ribbon, we have F dot multiline. And if you're not familiar with this application, it allows you to draw basically the FDM exhibits and it already has pay item information on it. And some samples are created for you and they are delivered with the state kit. So let me show you one. So I'm going to hit open and browse to our state kit install. And in the data folder, there is a multi line patterns. And this is the exhibit numbers if you want to choose to lay out just the 2D planimetric line work that has to pay out information on it that will report. If you're going to model to these lines, you'll convert them to feature lines and go that route. I'm going to select 913.4.4 lane curb, hit open. This fills in here. So we have our curb face. Let me expand this out. Carbon gutter type E. We have a 1030 skip. We have a solid six inch white stripe. And we have another type F curb with the pay item number on it. So you can either open already saved or you can build your own pattern. So let me just go ahead and place this and show you how this works. So you select entity to place multi-line. I'm going to select the alignment, populates up here. You have an option to erase existing entity, which means if you are offsetting from a line or a regular polyline, that's not an alignment, it will erase that. You can also control the multi-line placement to begin and end, the offset from the entity that you're going to offset from. So I'm going to leave this at zero because what we're going to do is here's your offsets from a zero. So this alignment, envision this at zero, then we're going to offset five and a half feet, six and a quarter. And as you can see, it just expands that way. Next, it's important to associate this alignment for quantity takeoff. So uh, you'll get the quantities of the line work that you are drawing here. So I'm going to hit draw multi-line. So the alignment's already selected. So you just have to left click on the side that you want these patterns to display. So I'm going to left click on the north side. I want to hit draw multi-line again, left click on the bottom. And if I hover over the items, now these are just regular polylines. Uh, that contain X data with it, which is what we call pay item data in Civil 3D. And let me go ahead and run a report real quick. Let's just show you. So if I do curbing, summary of curbs, let me go ahead and select. So I can hit uh, open output file, hit compute. Hit OK. And here's our two types of curb and gutter in that line work. So you can see a lot of time saving uh, using the F dot multi line tool. And let me close this. So creating this, first off, it's an XML file. So you can do a new and you can hit the plus button here, give it a name. I'll just call this one EOP. And if 
this entity itself contains a pay item number. You can select the pay item ellipse button and browse to the particular item that you that this linear feature is going to be and then tell it which layer it's going on and the offset that you're going to have and hit add and this list will just populate as many as you want and then you could uh, once you build your own you could hit save and save it to a location of your choice now the location the default location where these multi-line patterns are stored is meant to give you a starting point you can copy that data folder that contains the multi-line patterns move them to a central location on your server or a local so other users within your location can use these patterns next i want to show you xref compare i find this utility is very handy especially if you have other users in your surroundings um, working on files so I have a DSGN SP file so I'm going to type in xref because I want to reference in I'm going to click on attach and I'm going to browse to file that I want to bring in and I want to do this as an overlay and I don't want to specify on screen because I want it to come in at its coordinates select OK notice there's not anything here because I haven't saved this file yet with the changes that I made so let me select save and then go to my design file now you're used to seeing this balloon pop up with uh, reload the test file but you also have this toggle now that says compare the changes. Now you can control this. You can cut this off if you don't want to see the changes that have been made. But if you do, leave this toggled on and hit reload. Give it a second. And here it is. So everything that is changed um, in this case, which is there was nothing in this file. So everything here is a, a different shade and it's circled and you see up here you have your xref compare now you can make some modifications in the settings when you're done you can also scroll through each what's different in the file and then when you're done comparing you can hit the x and it goes straight to what you would expect here which is the xref now you can control how dark or faded this xref is you can go to the insert tab and under reference you have xref fading so the lower the number the brighter it's going to be the higher the number the fainter it's going to be so I'm just going to leave it at 22 there okay so let me go back to this file and I'm just going to draw some lines here just to show you an example again so I'm going to hit save and when I go to my design file the balloon should pop up and compare selected and I'm gonna go down here to my my highlighted new line work that I drew and it has a balloon around it to let me know that that has changed in the previous file so as you can see this is very handy to use in a environment with multiple users on the same file just to shows you what has been done or what has been changed located on the f.ribbon the line calculator is a handy tool that lets you see a distance of striping for example our 1030 skip here if you want to see how long you have in your design file you launch it you select entity and just left click until you're done make with your selections hit enter and we have two items here you can see they're highlighted red and 
the total here is in feet, linear feet, so you have 6,180. And you can convert that to miles, 1.170. So this will give you a estimate so far of your striping patterns in your design file. You can save it to a Excel file, CSV. You can create a table to insert it in your file. Or you can reset and make additional selections. So next, I'm going to cover a brief overview of traffic design workflow in Civil 3D. As you know, I support the ORD traffic tools, which they their beginnings came from Civil 3D, but unlike ORD in Civil 3D, it's, it's a better built-in system where we have tools that are written for you to do traffic design and the native Civil 3D functionality is also included to also do your traffic design. So first we have Entity Manager, which is EMX for short. This is where you browse through your PayItem DB file that's created upon launch. The first time you open Entity Manager, it's going to create a PayItem DB file for you. And then once it's created, you can save as your project ID number and save it in the calculations folder of your project. So from here, you have all your categories that you can choose from. You can also type in a text filter for description. You can enter in a pay item number to find. And once you make your selection, you can use these tools on the bottom to draw or place items with your selection made. So you can do draw lines, you can draw polylines, polygons, rectangles, arcs, circles, ellipses, ellipse arc, offset. You can draw a multi-line and insert a block with the symbology and X data on it, which X data, as you know, is the pay item data information for Civil 3D. So up top, we have, you can append items. Let's say you've already placed some blocks you want to attach the information on it the x data you can hit attach here you can replace a item with a new item you can fill a closed region with a hatch so this would be for your green bike lane pavements your island nose paint you can handle it this way you can remove all pay items from an object you can edit you can match properties so what this does is Let's say I draw just a regular line here. Let's say I draw a line here and I want to match properties and I want it to be a uh, 1030 skip. So hit match properties, select my source file, select my target and hit enter. And here is my line. It's now converted to a 1030 skip. It has the alignment, the layer symbology and the handle and, and the linear foot. Now you get all that data just hovering over each element. The term element is technically microstation. The term entity is what these are called in Civil 3D. So with Entity Manager open, you have a truck symbol. As you can see when I hover over this, truck symbol indicates that it has X data on it. If I hover in on line work that was created in the F.MultiLine, this curbing gutter face, you can see it has extra data on it. Another neat function of EMX is, let's say you wanted to use place block group to place a painted pavement message, a shortcut, instead of going through place block group and navigating through the pay item database to make your selection, you can select it here in EMX and right click. Now when you right click in Civil 3D, you get a lot more options, command options that work specifically with the Entity Manager. So I can select a selection here, right click, place block group, and what happens is it automatically loads into place block group. And you can do this for any object here, as long as it's a block for each items on the compute method. You can also go to your patterns here, right click, and now you have a different option to place pavement marking. 
and it will populate in here with your selection already made and it's ready to have the rest of the parameters filled in to place them. Now if you notice on the F dot ribbon we have duplicate pavement marking tools and duplicate place block group. So what this means is we have two that are labeled as beta and two that are not. The two that are not are the original pavement marking and place block group that was written for Civil 3D years ago. And since we have migrated some of these applications over to ORD, it has different functionality than the original. And some of that functionality is now coming back into Civil 3D. And at some point in our, hopefully by our next delivery, we will remove these originals out and you'll just have these two. So what this does until we remove them, it allows you to use either one and the difference being between the beta and the original is you can draw your up to six stripes. If you're using ORD pavement marking, this is the same functionality, right? So you can draw six, up to six patterns. You can have your history list filled out here. You can make your selection from entity to auto populate. Now some of the functions coming out of the beta or coming back from ORD into the beta version of the pavement marking tool. So to label in Civil 3D, we can do this. We can go to Annotate, Add Labels, and we have created notes that you can add in here. So down here, is, hit the Notes. Comes up with the feature, we can select uh, Note. The Note type is Note, and from the style we have already built in label styles for you. Make your selection, hit add, select the label location. And here it is, we have a six inch white 1030 skip with the white red RPMs at 40 foot on center. So if you wanna drag that off, you can select it. Notice you have two grips here. If you're unfamiliar with what each one does, you can hover over it. So this top one here, you can either move the label or rotate the label. And the bottom one here is move the actual point that you inserted it to. So let me move it up to the stripe itself. I'm going to cut snaps off for now. I'm going to move this label to here. Then I'm going to drag it off. So when I drag it off, you see an arrowhead appears. And you can go through here and make your selections for which type it is to add that particular note in your label. For signal design, if you're, again, if you're used to using ORD, we have signal design tool in ORD, but we don't need that in Civil 3D because we can handle it in different ways. So let me show you. Let me close pavement marking. Let me go to our home, open up our tool palettes move Entity Manager out of the way. So we have in our palettes, we have uh, F.Dot Subassemblies, F.Dot Structures, and F.Dot Traffic. So on F.Dot Traffic, here's where you can insert your signal heads, your pedestrian signal heads, signal and lighting tables that you fill in. We have our mast arm assemblies and signal blocks. So let me close Entity Manager. So for our mast arm assemblies, the uh, lightning bolt designates that it is a dynamic block, which means you can make selections after it's placed on the fly. So let me insert one for you here. So it's going to insert as a single, right? So if you select it, you have this pull down triangle and you can make your selections this way from a single to a double 60 30 60 40 60 50 60 60 so if i select 60 40 it changes to a double and if i right click and go to properties it has the pay item number on it so each selection you make is going to change the pay item number itself so all the different scenarios are covered in these assemblies here. So a couple of things you can do here. You have these additional grips. 
You can control the angle between the arm. You can either type it in or manually drag it. You can flip it. And you can, when you bring it in, you can bring it in parallel or to a specific point in this file. You can do that by clicking on the mast arm and use a transparent command station offset. So what that is, transparent commands are commands within a command. So we selected the mast arm to insert and then we selected station offset. So, so I can hit select to place the mast arm. You can see it's hovering here on my cursor. But before I place it, I can hit Station Offset, Transparent Command, select the alignment, type in the station, 14 plus 50, and see how it locks to that station. And then for offset, since I want this on the left side, negative 70, hit Enter, and there's my mast arm. And from here, you can make your options to make it a double arm and control the rotation and which direction it's facing. So next I want to show you how easy it is to build a block that has multiple pay items on it. You can use Entity Manager for this. So let's do a pull and splice box. So I can right click. This is the main block. So I want to do Add to Selected. And up here you have your tabs, uh, pay item categories, the X data selected, and alignments. So we're going to populate a list here with items. Just showing this as an example, it's not accurate, but you get, you'll get the point. So I'm going to right click on my next item, add to selected. It's going to keep going. Add to selected, add to selected. You can do as many as you want. So we have four items, that's enough. So I'm gonna select each one here. So before I place this in the file um, on the selected list, you have some options. If you want to change the order of these pay item numbers, you can do that. You can move pay item up, down, to the top. You can remove item, or if you wanna start over, you can hit clear list. So, to place it, I selected Insert Block. You can see it's at my cursor here. If you wanted it at a specific station, you could use the Transparent Command Station Offset again. But I'm just going to left-click it here. You can see the truck symbol, which is always a good sign. So if I hover over it, you can see it has all of the pay item numbers that or on this particular block. Now, another thing you can do here, you can add it to a favorites list. So you can build your assemblies with multiple pay item numbers on it, save it as a favorite to recall later. So one of the things I really miss when I'm working with ORD is the ability to have multiple files open at one time. If you're not familiar with Using Civil 3D, you can have any number of files open, any from different projects even, open at the same time, so you don't have to go one drawing at a time. And we have some users now converting from ORD to Civil 3D to do the traffic plan workflow because it's easier. Just If you want to do that, just XML out your alignments and reference in your line work, do your plans in Civil 3D, and then the finished product's a PDF anyway. So you can use either program to get to the same point, but um, if you want to convert yourself to Civil 3D to do the traffic portion of your plans, let the CAD office know and we'll be glad to help you through that process. Another thing you could do with Entity Manager is you can highlight Objects with pay items, if I select that, you can see everything with a pay item number attached is dashed. You can highlight objects without pay items, numbers. So you can see those highlighted. And if you want to highlight objects with selected pay item numbers, you can do that. So currently the box is selected as um, 
the one you're looking for. So here it is highlighted. And you can come up here and you can clear the highlight and go through that. So that's a way to just do a little quick QC on your design to make sure everything is covered. In ORD, we have I created some advanced search criteria. It functions similar to this, but not as detailed. Other options on Entity Manager, if you need additional information, you have a reference guide if you want to see more detailed information on how EMX works. Under Tools, you have options. When opened, you can do, you can control additional items, you can control which categories are displayed, and for unit definitions, this is handy. So what this does is goes through each item here, gives a description of what each compute method is and how it's calculated. So if you are curious, what, what is L or L2 or MT, you can come here and find out exactly what that is. I'm sure you're familiar with the some of these. For the rarely used ones, you can come in and see what is what. So next, we're going to take a look at Project Explorer. This is not new, but you may not be aware of the functionality that it provides. So I have a file open with a corridor in it. If I go to the, it's on the home ribbon, Project Explorer. So what this does, it allows you to peer into the current drawing that you have open. And let's say that you have a drawing from another designer, or you want to just check everything that's in here uh, instead of going through each individual piece. So think of this as everything together that you can even edit from here also, instead of going through each individual piece, alignments, surfaces, corridors, subassemblies. So up top here, you have everything that's in this file is listed and the number of items that are in the file or in uh, parentheses. So you have alignments, assemblies, corridors, point groups, surfaces, feature lines, parcels, catchments, pipe networks, pressure networks, sample line groups, blocks, property set definitions, and object sets. So you have a graphical representation here of profiles, alignments, sections that you can go through. And anything that is a like a purple text here, it is editable. So you can make changes. So for an example, alignment, you needed to add a design check set to it to make sure it's to F dot standard. Just double click and make your selection here from the list. You can also rename your alignment, profile name, your style. If you go to assemblies, you can, uh, for example, here the milling and overlay subassembly. You have the values that you can change here. You can select one particular one and it gives you a lot more options that you can change your styles that go with that. And on the section viewer here, you can navigate, navigate to each assembly. You see it highlights here. So you can make individual changes in this location and see the change in the uh, preview. So if you go to the corridor itself, you have station. You can go to the next station and keep going to preview how your parameters are going to lay out in the, the uh, previewer here. So there's a lot of different functionality within the Project Explorer. And I invite you to explore of what this utility can do for you. And if you need additional help, just click on the help, opens up, gives you more detailed information on how you can maximize the Project Explorer.